everybody. Uh, I'm Danny, uh, here with Rem Alternis, and we are about to present to you the first of our preludes from the Like Clockwork campaign that we'll be streaming uh, closer to the end of the year. Um, today, I have my friend Randy. He is going to be joining us with his character, Lachlan. Um, before we get into that, a little bit about myself. Um, I work with Rem Alternis uh, on many of their projects. Also for Callus Game Labs, I'm the Shadowruns missions developer. So their living campaign, I make sure that that gets uh, written and put out. Um, as well, I'm an avid gamer and right now working on a graphic series called Coddlesworth's Clockwork Circus, uh, which is set in the same world that this campaign is going to be set in. Uh, so that's me. Uh, Randy, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, thanks. Uh, so the name's Randy Alvaringa. I am uh, a actor um, currently working over in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, have done some theater and musicals a lot here in the area and abroad for a couple of years. I did some acting over in Tokyo, Japan, so that's kind of different. So uh, always great to uh, work with different people. But what I'm really passionate about and excited about is gaming. And so being a part of this um, is like a dream come true, getting to see this world and, and getting to share it with all of you guys out there. So I'm looking forward to being a part of it. Awesome, awesome. Um, so Lachlan is your character, and Lachlan's from um, a place called Istapanur in the world of Calafus. And Istapanur is sort of a, uh, an island, large island continent that is located in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, in this world, Istapanur has sort of this Wild West slash Australia sort of feel to it. Um, that's, that's just kind of the best analog I can give. Uh, as we get into, you know, the game and playing, we'll see more of how that actually works out. But that's the world. Uh, that's the place that they're in, the continent. And it is uh, mostly rolling plains, uh, flatlands, uh, lots of uh, grazing area. And uh, it's populated by the Nuri, who are opening, uh, who have ranches set up across the place. And right now, it is developing technology-wise. Uh, so there's a uh, there's a conglomerate that is trying to get a railroad across the continent, uh, and there's things that kind of go along with that. So that's kind of getting you oriented to the continent and location that today's prelude is going to be set in in the, in the country slash continent of East of Panur, uh, and. Why don't you go ahead then, Randy, and tell us about Lachlan. Yeah, so uh, Lachlan is the son uh, of a man named Eldrin uh, Bates. Uh, and they live in Istapanur, um, sort of in a small uh, homestead that their father built for him and his wife years ago. He uh, has darker, uh, dark brown skin. He has... Uh, sort of dreadlock hair that he wears under sort of a cowboy hat. And um, he he's very much against sort of the conglomeration that's trying to build this railroad. And the reason for that is um, just for him, he thinks it's doing more harm to the people of the country. And so, yeah, he, he's not happy about what's happening in his home. All right. So without further ado, uh, what we're going to do is go ahead and get into this prelude. Uh, these preludes are going to establish our characters, uh, and eventually we're going to bring all char all the characters. There's six of them total, uh, and we'll introduce them to you as as we go. Um, we're going to bring all of them together uh, at the end of the prelude series into a campaign uh, that hopefully will be long running, and we'll introduce everybody to this uh, world of Caliphus. So uh, we're using Fantasy Grounds uh, to to as our interface uh, for dice rolling, for character sheets, for maps and movement. Uh, so I'm really excited to get this going. So let's start with this. Uh, it's evening on the on the homestead over at Dosset Ranch, and Lox and his father are eating dinner. Um, there's a little bit of tension in the air. Um, because Lox is about to leave for the evening, and his father is not entirely certain he's okay with what Lox feels he has to do. Um, and so with that, uh, as the evening wears down and they finish their meal, uh, 
Eldrin stands up. Well, I suppose that's the that's the bit of it. You're going to be out tonight, huh? Uh, how many times do I have to tell you? Yes, this has to be done. I don't understand why it has to be you. Who else is going to stand up to them? Hmm? Who else is going to make them understand that they can't just do whatever they want to this land? Ah, Mamarti and Pradi, they're already going. They can just do it themselves. You know they're not enough. And besides, I'm the one who came up with this plan. So it's got to be me. I don't like it. What if, what if you get hurt? Don't worry about that. That's not going to happen. <laughs> I, 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 you've, you've seen me shoot before. If anything happens, I promise that we'll turn around and we'll come back. It, it, it's more about just making sure that these people understand they can't do whatever they want to do. Well, you're a grown man now. I cannot stop you, so... Uh, with that, he walks over and uh, sets the dishes on the on the far table next to the basin. Uh, clean up, and then come and sit with me outside. And with that, he steps outside, leaving Locke, uh, Locke's alone in the room for a moment. Yeah, and Locke's is sort of tired. This isn't the first time that his father's brought up his uh, sort of feelings against what he's doing. Um, and he feels bad because his dad is the person he cares for uh, more than anything. Um, and so he, he goes over, he dutifully washes those dishes. Um, <laughs> uh, sort of the whole time sort of thinking that there's no other option. Like he he wishes that it was not the case. He doesn't want to make his dad more angry, but yeah. Um, and then he goes outside to sort of sit in front of this house. All right. And he, as he steps outside, his dad is smoking a pipe, um, looking out over the, the, the range. Um, to the left is, is a barn. Uh, the horses are in the barn. Uh, there's, there's a horse for each of them in there. Uh, and they also have some uh, cattle that are right now kind of uh, pinned in, uh, in, in the area where, where they stay for, for the evening and, and nighttime. Um, during the day, they kind of let them kind of free roam. There's, there's, it's not a large herd. Uh, there's maybe five heads. Hmm. Uh, we've been here for... Going on 30 years now. It's been a good life, even without your mother. And, and Locks doesn't know how to, like, what to say because his dad sort of gets in this, this contemplative mood and starts to, be, and so he listens. That's sort of the, the mode he gets into. He sits down, he settles. He starts uh, fidgeting with something that's in his pocket as his dad talks. As he continues in the far distance, you can hear the cries of wild dogs uh, yapping into the, into the night as the sun is setting more fully. When we came here, there was nothing. The town over was not built. We had a tent there and we we spent the whole season and as we built the house. We made our life. And I understand. I understand why you feel how you feel. Oje is coming through with his railroad and taking from everyone what they've built. I am angry too. Then how can you just sit and just not do something about it? 
You you built this place with your own hands. And and Oze, he thinks he can just walk all over us. There are things that Oze can take. And if he takes them, they're just things. But some things cannot be replaced. You cannot be replaced. Father. It. I, I, I swear I will be careful. How many times have I, I gone on these rides before? I've always come back, yeah? Yes. You always come back until you don't come back. That is how it goes. I'm sorry that I gotta do this. But it's, it's eating at me seeing how much Oze and his corporation think they can just run things here. They, they take from the poor. There's so many people who have been hurt and killed by his thugs. And me and my friends, we, we have a chance to actually do something here. To make us, to take a stand. And... I look out upon all this land and these things that you've built, and I just want to protect them. That's all I want to do. Please. I know. I, know. I, have, I have said enough. You know my mind. I know your heart. I'm afraid, but... I'm also proud. Take me, Nari. She's faster. Yes, sir. And with that, he taps out his pipe, he steps to the door, and then he stops and turns. I'll see you in a few days. Yeah, I'll be back. And he fixes his hat and looks at his father. His father gives him a nod and then steps back into the house, leaving Locks alone outside. And Locks stands. Um, he looks out at the sun sort of going down in the distance. Looks back at the door his father just walked in. And he takes um, out what he was fidgeting with in his pocket, which is a harmonica. Um, it's one that his father uh, got from his mother and that his father passed down to him. And he just says, uh, he holds it tight. It's sort of a, a memento and he needs strength. And he goes, just take care of Pa. And, um, he puts it back in his pocket and heads to the stables. All right. Uh, there's two horses in the stables. Um, Minati is one, uh, and Sarefa is the other. Um, normally, uh, you ride Sarefa uh, locks, but um, yeah, Minati yeah. is there. Yeah. Um, so Sedefa probably starts moving in in the stable as he walks through and is like, okay, we're going. Um, and Lox ha walks over and, and just puts a, a hand on the horse's face and, and says, not this time, girl. And then he goes over to Manati and starts uh, rigging her for riding. Okay. Um, it doesn't take long. It's uh, Lox is well-practiced at at saddling up the horse and uh, getting the horse out. Um, it takes a little bit to kind of move some of uh, Lox's gear over from, from the saddlebags that are normally set up for a set FA. Um, but he does get those loaded up and then he, he hops on uh, the horse and 
and trots off into the evening uh, along the uh, dusty dirt road, uh, well-worn from all the horse traffic. Um, he's not far from the barn, uh, maybe five minutes just up the hill, when he hears the knicker of another horse and hoofs uh, kind of trotting up from the, from the east side, uh, which is the direction that he's about to turn. Um, and as he looks down that way, he can see a figure on horseback uh, approaching briskly. Um, in, yeah. the, in the darkness, it's hard to make out who it is. Okay. I mean, he continues on his path, uh, but he, he's trying to sort of see it, get within a distance where he can finally kind of see who it is, but he doesn't want to draw it too much attention to him if it is somebody he's not looking for <laughs> okay um as he rides forward just a, f a few more feet he can kind of make out the features enough to to sort of recognize who it is coming up uh she's wearing a cowboy hat as well um and she's on her her uh chestnut horse uh that um that you know well um and as she gets closer, you hear a call out to you. Um, are you really doing this, Lox? You know it. <laughs> I would have expected you to be joining us this time. You know, you're, you're kicking the anthill on this one. We've done our scouting of the place. We're just going to go in get the money and get out that's all yeah i know i've heard it before we've done it before um so join and, us what as uh as she rides closer uh locks can see the the face of of verma burke um his his uh friend uh perhaps on again off again romance um and she she pulls on the on the rein slightly to to stop the horse uh, her face is, is very serious. <sighs> you know, this isn't, this isn't kicking at one or two guys as they're riding down the path. I mean, you're, you're heading into, into, into Vyaga. Look, <laughs> I, I've done this a, a time or two. You have as well. I, I <laughs> I just really don't see this being that big of a deal. Their their guards have already been planted at some place else. It, this is the perfect opportunity. And you know, if you was there, it would be even better. So I got better things to do than getting killed. I would think you would too. <laughs> we ain't going to get targets. killed. There's other people. There's other places. Come on. Come on. Uh, I'm sorry. You're not going to talk me out of this one. You got your eyes on the prize and you're blind to everything else. It's, it's, no. it's, more, it's more than that. It's more. It's, it's... And he, he, he sort of swallows spit. I mean, he, he's kind of playing jovial right now, but he is afraid. Um, this is a bigger sort of hit than they usually try to do um and he he looks at her and he can tell that she's being more serious than she normally is um and he says it's gotta be done if we if if we're not the ones to do it no one's gonna do it and he's just gonna walk all over us and continue to do it you, you, you think you're gonna stop it i mean eventually that railroad's coming through that's that's probably if i can help it not if I can help it. Well, Look. And they, they, they both keep trying to talk over each other because they both think they know what's right for each other. Right. Um, and I think he's, he feels hurt because he came up with this idea sort of imagining that they would do this together and she was very quick to, to sort of um, to say no and to, to talk against it. Um, and she's probably the best gunsman in their group. Um, so her not being there, uh, worries him, but 
I mean, the number two best. And he, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, no, uh, he cares about her. And so he tells her not to worry um, that they've got to get moving. But if she's not going to help, he'll just have to, you know, do it himself. Well, do me a favor. Don't get yourself killed. Look out for those two idiots. <laughs> yeah. And with that, she she kind of kicks uh, into the sides of the horse with her with her boots, and uh, it, the horse canters forward. Yeah. Uh, he watches her go a little bit, and then shakes his hand and remembers he's got to be going. He's already left later than he expected, so he kicks his horse and rides in the direction he was going. All right. He rides for three hours or so uh, into the night. Uh, the wind blows gently. Uh, the sound of the grass lands rustling as the wind blows over it uh, is pretty much the only accompaniment that he gets. Uh, every once in a while, a, a night owl uh, hoots in the distance. And the sound of dogs, uh, always dogs, or wild dogs in this area. Um, but after about three hours, he can see in the distance the light of a campfire. Um, it would be hidden uh, from those approaching from the other direction. Uh, he knows the, the, the rock outcropping well. Uh, he's camped there several times before. Um, and as he approaches, he can see two figures there by the fire. Uh, Mamarthi and Pradi are already there uh, waiting and um, the plan is to ride out the next day uh, and get to Vialga whereupon they'll probably wait till the evening uh, and make their way in and try to recover the money that Oje's men have been collecting as a tax from the various locals uh, throughout uh, the area. Um, about 50 feet off, he sees one of them suddenly start and look, uh, reach for reach for his sidearm, but then, Fox, is that you? Yeah, you fools oh. couldn't have hit this fire a bit better. <laughs> And uh, he, he trots over and starts to un unhitch his horse, or hitch his horse, yeah. Uh, oh, no, oh, it's just feeling a little jumpy. Uh, party meets too. Yeah. Uh, the uh, other fellow is sitting down at the, um, at the fire. He's got a, a big cook pot over it. Um, smells good. Smells good. Um, Friday looks up. Um... <laughs> uh, I'm glad you're here, Lux. Uh, we were thinking maybe it's only going to be me and Mamarty, but... You couldn't count me out of this for the world. Uh, well, if you did not come, I think maybe we would have gone and done something different anyway. Hmm? Uh, well, someone's got to keep you two out of trouble. <laughs> That's why uh, I'm here. <laughs> Pride uh, scoops out uh, some of the stew into a bowl and, and offers it over. Uh, eat, eat. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and he he does. He he like he hasn't eaten for a while. Uh, he ate a little bit before he left, but uh, he's hungry still. So yeah. he, he sits with them and they eat. And he asks them uh, to sort of go over their plans uh, for the for the morning. Yes. So we rest, rest well tonight, and then we get up. Yeah, like you said, we'll ride out to to Vialga, and then we will uh, go to Oje's compound at the edge of the town. There is uh, uh, the main house. There is a bar. The bar is, is to the side, and um, yes, we'll come in under cover of night. That's what you said. There should only be three, four people there. 
sleeping. That's that's what. Yeah, it'll it'll be simple, easy, in quick, out quick. You do it right, they won't even know, huh? Just right. take and, and, and the most important is who we're helping. Remember that. Yes, yes, yes. I know, I know. My aunt, she won't be able to stock up for the winter if we don't get this money back. So many people hurting. So, tonight we eat, rest, tomorrow we go. Um, yeah, so they, they finish eating, locks, starts going over his equipment. Checking his guns, cleaning it, making sure it's as ready to go for the day ahead. Um, and as they get ready to sleep, he he volunteers to to sort of keep the first watch. Uh, I mean, he's not stupid, right? He he, right. he doesn't expect there to be any trouble, but he he's gonna be careful, right? Uh, and then through the night, uh, after after about two and a half hours or so. Uh, you kick Mamardi uh, and wake him up for watch, um, and then go ahead and uh, hit the rack yourself uh, and and sleep until uh, the sun starts to rise, and that wakes you up naturally. Um, the fire's kicked up again. Uh, Prati makes breakfast, um, just some some eggs and some bacon uh, that he cooks up, and then. Once you guys have eaten, uh, you get up on the horses and, and start making your way uh, for the day to Vyalga. Um, in this area, the journey is uneventful. Um, the only people that you fear that you would even come across uh, would just be the various folks that live around here. Uh, you're not too concerned with bandits uh, other than Oje's men. Uh, who you consider to be bandits, but um, the wildlife here, especially during the day, it's 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 generally fairly tame. Uh, dogs in the distance, but but they generally stay away from the roads and more well-traveled places. It's a long ride. Uh, you're not pushing the horses. Um, just kind of moving at a at a relatively even pace throughout the day, uh, and it's. Getting near sundown when you arrive at the uh, at the edges of Vyaga, which is uh, a small town. Um, it's a it's it's a sort of a crossroads um, where the where the stagecoaches that travel kind of north to south and uh, and then also north to west into the deeper parts of East Tipanur, uh, they'll always stop here. Uh, there's a there's a nice uh, sized tavern uh, in the main town um, off to the north. West is Oje's compound, where uh, his men stay and where they kind of move in and out from uh, and and have their operations. So with that, you guys go ahead and, and head into the town proper itself uh, and just go ahead and, and stop at the at the saloon to uh, have a meal and a few drinks maybe. Uh, really start thinking about if you're going to do this. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, the saloon is, 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 it's fairly quiet. It's, it's not the busiest place. So um, there's probably about six or seven other uh, people in here. Uh, most of them men, uh, a couple of women, mostly women that work in the tavern. Uh, but a couple of women are, are with their man. Um, as you approach the the bar, um, bartender looks over. Oh, what are you having? Give me something strong. <laughs> something strong. Uh, with that, he turns. Um, but Marty and Prady kind of say, "Yep, yep." Uh, and so the bartender turns and and pours from a from a nondescript bottle, uh, dark brown. Uh, it's a deep, deep brown sort of clear liquid in a in a shot glass there that he turns and he. Pushes them all out to you guys. Come in off the road. Sure are. Just 
just you know traveling through got some deliveries that we just finished thought we'd take a, a moment here get a drink traveling north or south we're going a bit more north after this mm. yeah yeah any news news from the southlands not particularly he's he's very careful with the information he's going to give so right. he's trying to be as nondescript as he can be right well supper's on in a little bit and uh you stay in for it it'll be two coins he he gives him two coins and then uh he gives him a, a silver piece just for his service but he also asks if there's any news he's heard from the road. Uh, most news is around uh, the railroad, huh? More workers coming in. It's been good for business here. Uh, whatever little Jose pays them, they give to me and that keeps them happy, huh? Yeah, yeah. sure it does. Yeah, like I said, dinner's on in a little bit. We'll bring you out to Blade. Um, and with that, he moves on to the next customer. Yeah. Uh, just kind of keep an eye on things in here. It does seem like uh, people who are around, there might be a couple of people traveling through. Um, a couple of folks that definitely look like, you know, they're, they're probably laborer uh, class individuals who are, here to to work on the railroad as it's as it's getting into this area it's you're you're you know you're a day's ride out from uh from home and uh and then probably just a few miles to the north is where the 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 end of the railroad is right now so uh just kind of watching keep an eye on things you don't notice anyone that that um that really sets off any triggers um But if you like, uh, you can go ahead and roll either a perception or an insight check. We'll so do see some dice rolling. All right, I'm I'm going to go with the uh, the perception on this one. <laughs> okay, so just seeing what what's in there. Right. All right, so uh, I your first roll. It. <laughs> First roll of light clockwork is a 19 plus your 5, 24. So um, uh, Lox is a fairly perceptive individual. Um, and just looking around, he doesn't see anyone until kind of looking over into the into the side corner. There is There are a couple of fellas playing cards, uh, and those guys look like they know their way around a gun. Um, not sure if if those are if those are um oj's men or not uh could be some some gunmen traveling through uh whether they've picked up on on you mamarty and uh, pradi there uh you can't say uh, mm -hmm. but they're the only folks in here that kind of get your attention any more than anyone else um mm -hmm. and they're playing cards right yeah yeah they're playing cards uh I look over at uh, Mamardi and Pradi and ask either of them if they feel like they're lucky enough tonight to play a, a game of cards. Because what I want to do is I want one of them to play and sort of us to sort of uh, like watch where where these guys are going and listen listen in from a, di a different table, like the table nearby or something. Well, I don't so I don't want to be obvious that we're <laughs> so. Uh, Pradi is good at cooking, but not at cards. Got it. Got it. Uh, but Marky, uh, he's all right, you know. Um, but but, but he's maybe not he looks, over, he looks over and he's he's a little nervous about it. Uh, he's um, he kind of considers it for a moment, uh, and then he looks over at you and says, "Ah," and he kind of holds up a, a hand and he's just like, "Yeah." Ah. Save it for save it for the shootout later, huh? 
And uh, Lachlan also doesn't feel particularly good at trying to beat these guys at cards. Uh, but, um, yeah, he, he, he's, I mean, obviously he, he's sort of watching them, making sure that they're not being watched themselves, but uh, he's going to focus on their drinks. He doesn't want to cause more trouble uh, leading to more eyes on him than needed. So, right. He decides uh, that he looks at his friends. Then if you want another drink, let's do that. Or let's get out of here. But it doesn't look like we're going <laughs> to right. do much here. So uh, a few moments later, uh, dinner is brought out and uh, mm -hmm. you guys get a couple more drinks with that. Um, they just, you know, they finish playing cards uh, probably about halfway through you eating. Uh, and that's when they, they get up and, and, you know, drop a couple of coins on the table and, and head out uh, the door towards the, uh, and and you do notice that they do turn in the direction of OJ's compound. So uh, your understanding is that there's probably about 20 men total ju that just operate in the area, but they're generally always out uh, on various errands. Uh, you're you're hoping tonight that there's only going to be three or four. Uh, all right. Um, and and that they'll again they'll all just be asleep. So, uh, with that, you um, you finish the meal and and head out. Uh, kind of move over towards um, the edge of town, um, kind of opposite of OJ's compound, to just sort of wait out, uh, wait out the evening. Um, which seems like it takes forever to arrive. Um, always a little bit of, of nerves and anxiety before something like this. Uh, and, and it can, it can feel like it takes some time, but the world turns and night arrives. And with that, you make your way towards OJ's compound in Vialga. All right. So, this is the town of Vialga, or the town of Vialga, the, the compound in Vialga. Um, you and Mamarti and Pradi are, are, are coming in from the, the southwest corner of the map. Um, so what we're looking at, there's a couple of buildings here. There's a, there's a sort of a general store um, that's run uh, for OJ's, uh, that sells goods and stuff. It's a, like OJ's general store. Um, there's another small tavern specifically for OJ's men. Um, this large building on the far east side, um, that's basically where everything is. That's where they're going to be sleeping. That's where the office is. That's where the money's going to be, et cetera. Um, there's a big uh, wooden door kind of closing over it. Uh, there's a pen on the north side. That's They've got their horses in there. Uh, and then there's some, you know, as you kind of are, have scouted from – a distance you notice that there's some tents kind of in back here um a few other buildings you're not sure what all of them are uh but but generally all of these are are you know just kind of for oj's compound uh probably one of these buildings is a store uh like a storage uh building for for all of their goods and dry goods and stuff so um yeah that's uh this is the layout um and on the south side of the large building, there's a large kind of fenced in pin. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's, that's not really included on the map. You'd have to get into there from inside. You could try to climb over that, but it's definitely got some, uh, uh, the, the wood poles they use to kind of make the wall, they're all sharpened on the top. So, Got it. Um, so it could be dangerous. Got it. It could be dangerous. So with that. Uh, from, from scouting, uh, sort of what, what way would be probably better to approach this building from? At least from what uh, I can tell. So you can kind of come from, uh, so you're, you're trying to make it in that front door. So you right. can kind of come like around behind these buildings here on the, on the bottom side, mm -hmm. uh, and kind of try to get up there. Um, you could kind of, go between these buildings on the on the north side there's a there's a spot between 
uh, the buildings here. That's yeah. um, that's got some some wood on it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, you could kind of sneak through this corner here, uh, which I'll uh, I'll put a marker where I'm talking about. So there's uh, yeah, there's a corner here, um, and um, yeah, yeah. I think so, I think that that sounds more like what he would want to do because. I think from where they are getting to near where the horses are and seeing if they can see how many horses they're seeing sort of locked up in there as they're moving through. Like right. Sort of trying to sneak by. Cool. So, so you're going to go which way again? Say that? So, sort of around the north, in, uh, the northern part of the building. Part. Seeing if they can go through that sort of sneaking as much as they can to get a look. Uh, through the stable and um, sort of those tents to see if those people are still sleeping. They want to be sure that they're approaching the the main building um, quietly. All right. So, oof. Looks like I didn't do a good job on these on these tokens. I made them very small. That's okay. <laughs> All right. So let me go ahead and place these tokens down as you are approaching. So that's Fadi. Marthy. All right. There's Lachlan. All right. So those tokens should have appeared on your map. Mm hmm. Kind of put them over by the um, by the spot. The, the wagon. Yep. Yeah. All right. Um. So yeah, you guys are going to try and 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 sneak up around the side area. So what I'd like you to do at this point is go ahead and give me that stealth check. Um. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Let's see what we get here. Not bad. Not bad. Could be worse. Uh, <laughs> so. <laughs> it, it could be worse. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get. Uh, I'm gonna roll some stealth for your your two your two buddies there, uh, Marty and Prady. Okay. Um, as you're moving kind of around this the side, uh, Prady actually kicks over uh, a stone uh, and. And it just kind of clumps onto the side of the wagon there, and and he's he he's like, ah shit, <laughs> you know, and he kind of <laughs> yeah. stands up like, ah. Um, Mamarty looks back at him and is like, um, yeah. But yeah, uh, other than that, you, you kind of wait, see if you hear anything happening. Yeah, uh, is there any reaction to that noise? You don't hear a reaction. Uh, Mamardi kind of like goes over to Prady and is like, "You wait here. <laughs> cover us." <laughs> I got it. And so, yeah. so Prady nods, and uh, Mamardi kind of comes up with you. Uh, yeah. And so you start, you move forward here. Um, mm -hmm. You get to this area kind of between the buildings. Uh, go ahead and make a perception check real quick. Mm -hmm. um, oh, sorry. I accidentally switched that. Yeah, got it back. Okay. Ooh. All right. Uh, you don't really hear anything. Um, you don't hear voices. You don't hear um, you don't hear any snoring. Mm -hmm. uh, there's definitely some horses uh, up in the corral. Mm -hmm. uh, there's about seven or eight uh, horses in the corral, yeah. um, and it's just it's really eerily quiet. Um, okay. Huh. And uh, he sort of looks around he notices how quiet it is it's it's a bit strange he expected at least some some people 
still here, but with all of these horses, he's sort of a bit surprised. It's a, it's a bit more than he was expecting for this, but mm-hmm. um, yeah, he. Uh, hmm. Hmm. So our big thing is um, is we're 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 trying to get in and get out. Um, yeah. I wonder if there's a way to like get like get the corral like locked or like like put something to slow people down so that if they were to have to like run in a quick moment like whoever would have to deal with that first and it would give them a, a little bit of time a little bit of a lead so yeah so you would kind of move back to the corral uh and, and over to the gate uh you've got some rope mm-hmm. uh, of your own uh so you're just you know uh, you figure if I just take the time right now to kind of just loop this rope around here, you know, you can always buy new rope. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it's not going to do too much, but it's it's more than uh, it, it'll it'll be something. <laughs> it'll, it'll slow them down, maybe give you a minute or something to to get a little bit further away or yeah, or what have yeah. you if, if it comes to that. So what I'm going to have you do is go ahead and roll a survival check. That's what we're going to use for any rope tying right. sort of stuff. All right. Also, wisdom. I like wisdom rolls. Yep, yeah, I do. so so you get it, you get that thing, you loop it around a few times, you know, you you remember, you know, the you make the 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 rabbit comes out the hole around the tree back in the hole, whatever yeah. that things. You know, those things, yeah. Uh, those things. <laughs> all the knots. And, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, you got like five different knots in there all tied up and, and just wrapped you just got it wrapped around. So they they they're just really going to have to spend at least as much time as you spent tying it. Uh they're going to have to spend undoing it. Um Got it. And and you took your time, and they'll be trying to you know get it right. done while someone's yelling at them to to chase you. So you're hoping uh, this will do it. But yeah, yeah. So he he's glad about that. He also like looks at uh, which which friend is with me up here. Uh, uh, this is uh, Mamarty. Yeah, yeah. He looks at Mamarty, and and I mean probably notices a bit more nervousness beginning uh, with how sort of eerily quiet it is. But they, I want to continue going, like you said, sort of to that corner, as opposed to going down the middle here, if that's possible. All right. Yeah. So you move past here, uh, around the corner. Go ahead and give me another stealth, yeah, stealth check, just uh, as we're moving quietly around. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, what did my friend do? <laughs> You are the wind. Um, yeah, you, you don't hear Mamarthi at all, as as you also feel pretty confident about your own silent, silent steps. So uh, you guys make it around this corner. Uh, you peer out, uh, you know, between these cracks here. And yeah, it's it's definitely quiet. There's a there's a light shining from this this building right here um i'll go ahead and put a little bit of a a cone here so you can see kind of the light just shines out a little bit from this building it's it's a dim light it's it's nothing nothing crazy uh most everything else is fairly dark um and which building was that i know we went around sort of the back end of it uh that's kind of like the semi saloon building got it but it, it it's also really quiet. Like as we passed by, it, it was. Um. Yeah. It was. It was. It was definitely quiet as you passed around the back. If someone was in there, they're not talking or making any noise or moving around. Got it. That's yeah. Cool. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna sort of go around this corner, and um, I I don't necessarily want to go in the front door like <laughs> that doesn't sound like a good idea specifically are there any windows or uh entrance like something like a vent or not a vent but sort of i guess access like under the the foundation or something uh not so much under you figure that you might be able to try to climb up on top somehow and and there there is a chimney um if there's no fire going perhaps that's a that's an entry point uh there's not 
you, you didn't notice any any windows. This is this is a pretty solid building okay. uh, specifically because it's it's just where they keep like the money and, and everything. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, so if he thinks he can maybe climb it uh, with Mamardi, or maybe his plan is to sort of get in himself and have Mamardi sort of stand watch on this side. Uh, hmm. Yeah, he's going to try to climb that. Okay. Uh, so there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can just try to scale the wall itself. Um, mm -hmm. That's probably the most difficult way to do it, but uh, but you'll you'll be here on the side and kind of hidden. Uh, there's a, a covered wagon over mm -hmm. here. Uh, just if you kind of cross in a little bit, there's that covered wagon. So you can maybe climb on the wagon and then boost up onto the top of the building that way. Yeah. Um, those are that's those are pretty much your options. Uh, mm -hmm. You can also kind of try to shimmy between the two buildings uh, a little bit. Um, yeah. That would probably make a little more noise, but it would be easier than just scaling the wall. Got it. He doesn't want to make the noise. Uh, so he's going to probably try to use the... Um, what he's going to do is he's going to try... Uh, <laughs> I think he kind of wants to probably like... More than like brute strength of, through climbing, he kind of wants to like do a sort of jump, like a probably like some somehow from the top of this, like maybe being boosted up by Mamardi or something. Okay, all yeah. right, yeah, that sounds good. Uh, so this is going to be with with uh, advantage because you're being assisted by Mamardi. So he's going to kind of back up against the edge of the building and hold his hands out so that you can step in and and he'll try to pitch you up so that you can just kind of grab the top. And haul yourself up. Okay. So this is going to be an athletics check. Mm hmm All right. Let's. Uh, but with advantage. So uh, the way that you can, one of the ways you can do this is you can just click that button that says ADV at the bottom left of Fantasy Grounds, and that will. Yeah. Uh, nope. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he tries, and then he face plants. <laughs> so, yeah. So. So he tries to push you up, and you try to reach up, but you just miss the the lip of the wall, and uh, and you fall uh, to the ground uh, next to Mamardi, and and he kind of tries to grab you, and and uh, you you freeze for several moments to um, to just kind of like mm -hmm. make sure that nothing's going on. Um, several moments pass. Yeah, he, is there rouse like any any movement that we can tell? So if you'd like to make that perception test, I uh, do. That's that's exactly what I want to do, uh, because he's <laughs> his pride's hurt as well. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna succeed at something. Yeah, oh. and then he he definitely doesn't perceive anything either. <laughs> right. Like, I got all like, the good rolls in the beginning. Yeah. The blood's rushing in his ears, you know, and, and yeah. his, his face is, is reddening up the face a little bit. And, but he doesn't hear anything. Um, doesn't see anything else going on. Okay. Uh, so, so then, yeah, yeah. he's going to try. Uh... Hey. So if there's no, no movement, he's going to... Uh... Try again. Ah! <laughs> this is All not right. a good idea. <laughs> All right, so he's going to try and boost Jeff again, so with advantage. Okay. Okay. Advantage. <laughs> Please don't. All right. Oh! Got that 18. <laughs> All right, so Marty's like, All right. He backs up against the wall. And, and he's, uh, he's, he's like, <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> it's totally his fault, but he doesn't want to make it look like it's his fault. <laughs> so Lox kind of takes a few steps back this time uh, and gets a little bit of a running start, kind of steps up into his hands, and Mamardi boosts him up. Uh, and Lox grabs the edge of the thing, and it's enough to pull himself up. And there 
at the probably he could see that this building uh the edges is is raised up over the roof mm -hmm. by maybe a foot and there at the about oh just uh maybe 15 feet away from you is a rifleman mm. Has uh, it, 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 yeah, he's pointing that rifle right at you, yeah. and you're just like, "Oh!" <laughs> <laughs> uh, as you see that, as as you see that. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and uh, just kind of jump into initiative. Uh, so your initiative uh, bonus is four. Your your dexterity is seventeen. Uh, you have um, an ability because uh, your your class is gunslinger. Uh, so your ability is. Um, unfettered action so whenever you're not wearing armor you get to add half of your proficiency bonus to your initiative rolls so that means your total is plus four you rolled an 18 uh that's pretty good um yeah what we've got is uh mamarty and Pradi are also going to roll so let me go ahead and get them uh knocked out and check Ooh, well done. Marty got a 20 on his roll, so he's going to go on a 22. Uh, Prady, however, got a 4, so he's going to go on a 6. He yeah, I mean, not. he's way over there. He's way over there. He doesn't even know what's going on right now. Uh, <laughs> so uh, Marty's uh, down at the bottom, and he's looking up. He's like, okay, go. Uh, and then it's your turn next, actually, uh, as yeah. you're hanging there. So, Huh. <laughs> yeah, there's no gun pulling that you can do with that. So, uh, huh? Ah, man. Yeah. So, do you use your action to haul yourself up and hope he doesn't shoot you, or do you drop back to the ground? Yeah, yeah. So, so, so on this roof with this sort of raised. Uh, ex like outline of it. Um, is there anything that could be cover? Is there? No, not that you can see. It's pretty empty. Yeah, There's yeah. a chimney over at the. So then top. I'm going back down to the ground. Yeah. Okay. So you're gonna drop. Uh, we're gonna say that that's gonna take just five of your movement, right? Okay. Uh, yeah. You you are you have uh thirty feet of movement before you have to um take uh before you need to go ahead and and use an action for for uh, dashing so and are these blocks yeah. each uh sort of how many yep feet? each block is five feet Got it. Uh, so you have five blocks left that you can move on your turn um, yeah i i think i want to uh so so he looks up sees a gun sort of <laughs> let's go <laughs> and marty's probably like what's going on and in the same like moment he splits and uh gets let's see it, I, and I'm on this corner, right? And I can't get to around the corner of the building, right? You, you, uh, you could get. You can't get around the corner of the large building. You could definitely get around the corner of the smaller building there. Yeah, uh, like back the way you came. Yeah, um, I might, I might do can, that and yell at, uh, or, or like grab Mamarty and try to like right. <laughs> get back. Okay, so you try to kind of grab at him as as you move. Uh, so you can move through allies. Yeah. Uh, you just can't end your turn in the same space as them. So right. one, two, three, uh, four. You can either end your turn right at the corner or one square over. So right at the corner, the guy could probably still shoot at you, but you'd have cover. Right. But if you were one square over, uh, he wouldn't be able to shoot at you at all. Yeah, I'm going to do that. <laughs> all right. So you move to here. Yeah. All right. So that is uh, what you did. Uh, this guy, he's moving up to the edge of the building here, and he looks down and whew, he sees Mamarty. Uh, as as you're as Mamarty's kind of tailing after you, uh, he yeah. sees Mamarty down there, and he's going to go ahead and um, aim at him. No, <laughs> and aim at Mamarty. So uh, here he goes. Um, yep. All right. Mm. So with that attack oh that's a hit okay um what's gonna happen so now so you, you see on the left you see that there's uh the rifleman has has attacked his turn is up uh, yeah. and then you see the attack uh mamarty hit so right. 
with a rifle. Oh. Oh my Lamar gosh. Goes, yeah. <laughs> so right. he just basically gets shot like in he the He got back. shot good. Like, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. I mean, he just like squared him uh, right in the back there. Uh, Mamardi just, you, you hear him tumble to the ground. Um, and uh, with that, um, the the sound of the sound of additional combat occurs um you you now hear movement uh definitely mm-hmm. a lot of movement uh going on at this point so okay uh all right so as this guy though uh steps out of the building here uh and starts running uh in the direction to 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 go after you uh Pradi, who is holding an action is going to go ahead and take a shot at that guy. So we're going to go over to Pradi. He is using his reaction to trigger his held action uh, to shoot at this rifleman. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, you hear the the rifle report from Pradi's side, uh, yeah. and this guy ducks under and and realizes that there's there's more uh, to the fight. So he kind of jumps back here to get into cover all right right. um okay several gunmen also run out of the building Mm -hmm. uh from various areas uh actually and so let's see here and there's another one uh and then you can hear uh, a few more footsteps uh prodi's turn however uh that was his reaction so he just he gets to fire again uh with that um repeating rifle so he's going to go ahead and uh not the guy who ran behind cover but this guy who ran out who's running out in the open he's going to go ahead and pull two. On that guy. yep a lot better uh you hear the <laughs> rifle report again and you hear somebody scream uh cry out from inside of the uh oh yeah you just hear like the gurgling death cry ah! uh as 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 this guy falls um all right, yeah. Mamardi does not go because right, he is down. Um, yeah. All right, Lachlan. Uh, all right, it is your turn. Yeah. Uh, can I move to the corner and grab Mamardi and like pull him back as my action, or yes. like, yeah. Yeah, you definitely can do that. So you you kind of reach forward, you grab him, and you, you just kind of pull him back. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's your action. Um, I don't think you have a specific bonus action you can take right now. So that's no. that's kind of where we're at. All right. So uh, next up is that rifleman. He's looking for a target down there. He's waiting for you to kind of come out. He shoots at the ground as you you know you come out. You grab a Marty. He's trying to shoot you, uh, but he doesn't doesn't hit. Uh, this other rifleman is now trying to fire at uh, Prodi, but Prodi's dug dug in pretty good, mm-hmm. so uh, the chances of him hitting are much lowered. Uh, so let's see what happens here uh, as the rifleman fires at Prodi. Oh, he still manages to get him. <laughs> no. uh, oh. Wow, this is no bueno. Wow. All right, cool. This is this is definitely no bueno. Uh, you hear that go off. Uh, the gunmen are are moving. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, this one gets around the corner, and he's going to try and shoot at you. Mm-hmm. Um, this is gunman number one shooting at locks. Here we go. Oh wow! You are you are <laughs> you are fire today. The rolls are the rolls are rolling. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, so that yeah. actually hits you and and yeah, you, you and I'm, I go down. Hit, uh, hit you and and you kind of uh, you go down as as you lose consciousness. Uh, you hear a voice. Um, 
Don't kill him, you idiot. And as that, as you hear that, and and you hear like some footsteps stop, you you realize that that's that's my dog running back and forth. Uh, <laughs> so that's not who that is. Uh, as 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 you fade from consciousness, you realize that 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 voice is is Verma's. And then you lose consciousness. You don't know how long you were out for, but you do wake up. Your side is bandaged, your wounds dressed. You sit up in the bed and you look around trying to get your bearings. Uh, as you raise your hand to kind of rub your head, you realize there's a weight and you hear the clanking of chains. You look and you see that your door is a, a cell door, um, just metal bars. A few moments later, you hear booted footsteps. And a man appears, well-dressed, dark complexion. He's got a cane uh, with, a, with a golden pommel, uh, just a round ball. Lachlan Dossett. It is a pleasure to meet you. My name is Oje Dameka. And we'll stop there. How do we feel about that? Oh, it was fun. It's <laughs> we are the worst bandits. <laughs> I like vigilante bandits, but it's cool. <laughs> I'm learning. Well, I mean, it I sounded mean, they, like. Uh... Yeah. No. 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 I saw. Uh, I or you. I. I got what you said, and I'm still in sh in shock, just like <laughs> like Lachlan is. Um. Yeah. Um. And. Uh, I think he would be very worried about the two he came with um as well but um i think he's he's more he, he's extremely confused extremely angry and then on top of that uh you know uh Oze is here and yeah. Yeah. yeah no uh it's uh it's a big surprise i will say <laughs> So, so yeah, so that's, uh, that's the prelude, uh, first prelude episode for, uh, for locks. Uh, there are a few more preludes to go cause we we're, we're, the preludes are meant to get locks from where he's at to where we need to be when the campaign starts, uh, later on this year. Um, so I hope everybody that, uh, that tuned in enjoyed, um, and, uh, I'm definitely looking forward to to more of these, more of this with locks, uh, and and getting on with the rest of the story. So, um, and I'm that, excited to see what uh, what they're up to and why someone I knew was there. So, uh. yep. <laughs> sure. So with that, uh, yeah, we will uh, sign off for now, and we'll catch you on the next one. So, bye. Thank you. <laughs>